I don't want to go more than 10 minutes into the talk without talking about Georgiana Malloy, because it is the Georgiana Malloy <coughs> lecture. Um, and I just want to talk about these. <laughs> and I do see why in, in just a moment. Um, when people talk about Georgiana Malloy, one of the things that they say, especially if they don't know very much about her, one of the things they say is that she was very pious and that she is responsible for the air and lily infestation that we have in the southwest of WA. I've never actually found a shred of evidence that she planted air and lilies, but some of my recent research has found some very interesting things, and I thought it would be important to share it with you today, because we're talking about the early years of the Augusta settlement. And what's usually said is that Georgiana Malloy brought the Arums with her from the Cape on the voyage and planted them in her garden in Augusta. Um, the first thing is, if she did that, then I'm pretty sure, I'm not a botanist, we have botanists among us, um, so they might help out, but I'm pretty sure that there'd be a fairly serious arum infestation that we couldn't get rid of in this area, particularly around the place where the Malloys, um, where the early settlement was. I think there are some further over where there was a later settlement, but it is not a problem around the Malloy area, even given the fact that there's a lot of fresh water under the ground there with the streams coming down. I do think I found the source of the rumour, uh, and I'll just share that with you first, um, before I go on to talk about the Arams up in Busselton. Um, I think that this is what happened. I think somebody read a letter that Georgiana wrote in 1834 and came to a conclusion without knowing, perhaps as much as they might have known, about the plants involved. Georgiana wrote in the middle of November, sorry, 1832, she said, I'm sitting on the veranda, that's just over here in Augusta, surrounded by my little flower garden of British, Cape and Australian flowers, pouring forth their odour, for the large white lily is now in bloom. I think somebody assumed a large white lily, Georgiana, she's come from the Cape, she's planted the arum. The first thing is, to my knowledge, in the middle of November, the arum lilies are not just coming into bloom. There may be a few brownish coloured ones still around, but that's way too late to say that the arums are coming into bloom. Second thing, just let me read that bit again. Pouring forth their odour for the large white lily is now in bloom. As far as I know, arum lilies have no fragrance. They don't smell. However, the swamp lily, Crinum pedunculatum, has large white flowers. It's noted for its fragrance and it starts flowering at the beginning of December. And I think it was probably the swamp lily that Georgiana was planting that maybe she had brought with her from, um, from the Cape. So that's the, that's the first thing, and that's about um, Augusta. Um, there certainly is a serious infestation in the, um, in the Bustleton region, um, around, uh, including around Fairlawn, where Georgiana lived, where she moved to when she left Augusta. I found a scrap of paper among the family, family um, papers, probably ten years ago, written, I think, in Sabina Hale, Georgiana's daughter's handwriting. And it said, Georgiana Malloy did not plant the first Aaron lilies at Fairlawn. That was Mrs. Gale. I kept that to myself for a very long time because it was the only evidence I had. I certainly didn't want to blame someone else for something that Georgiana Malloy has been blamed for for 150 years. But very recently, I came across a newspaper article it's in the newspaper, so I can happily share it with you. And it's a story that was in the newspaper uh, about an article uh, written to do with an interview that Sir Paul Hasluck did in Bustleton in 1927. Sir Paul Hasluck visited uh, Fairlawn to speak to Mr Gale, Richard Gale, who was 93, I think, at the time. Richard Gale had been John Malloy's estate manager when John, John Malloy was old, and after Malloy died, Richard Gale bought Fairlawn, and he and his wife, Hannah, lived there. And the article says this. 
Richard Gale was apparently not well enough to converse with Paul Hasluck, but he had a lively interview with Gale's wife, Hannah, who managed at one and the same time not only to score a point against the bustles, but also to offer an interesting sidelight on ecological change. She prided herself on the arum lilies she had planted at Fairlawn. The neighbours objected to them, she said, as a pest. I remember Miss Bustle paying a man 16 shillings a day to grub out the lilies, but I kept on planting. That is something by which I will be remembered. <laughs> Unfortunately, not. 